I think that was Andy Reid after the yeah, Bears game. It can be any of them. It can be Romeo Cornell after beating the Bengals. Let's hear Romeo, what's your thoughts on beating the Bengals? When I used to feast like this, I would have a troop of minstrels to serenade me. Those were great times. He's, he's talking about when he was up in New England. <laughs> and Bill Belichick and Charlie Weiss would lay around on couches while these women fed him grapes and shit. <laughs> People and Mr. <laughs> sang him songs. Charlie Weiss. Oh my God. I think there's a cartoon in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, man, those Snickers commercials are freaking genius. Oh, I, I know. Love them. I know. They're so absurd. Uh, speaking of Romeo Cornell, before the game uh, between the Bengals and the Browns this past weekend, this mm-hmm. is what he said about the teams. Listen to this. As you look at Cincinnati, both teams are similar. Both teams have uh, <laughs> 0 and 3. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> they be similar. Both teams are similar. <laughs> uh, oh, that's too funny. I mean, it isn't like they're a bunch of meals. No, they're similar. Well, I tell you what. Um, if you do, <laughs> do you have the wah wah music? I think we're going to need it. For what? Oh, Dallas Ace has just written us something. Just now? No, he wrote it apparently like right after the game. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Right, from Dallas A's. The better team did not win. We could easily have beaten the Deadskins if it wasn't for these two major things. Oh, boy. Abandoning the running game. You should never stop running the ball. Unless it's a dire emergency. Like if somebody's dying or something. You especially don't abandon the run. The defense only stopped in two straight plays. Oh, no, they're stopping our running game. We should start passing. <laughs> what the hell is it? It's second down. Keep running. <laughs> you know, I can't even read the rest of it because now I've messed up my computer screen and I can't see it anymore. I've been crying all over it. Damn, Dal. Seriously, man. You had to go to school the next day. What are you going to tell the girls about your eyeballs being all red like that? Honestly. I mean, I mean I'm expecting you actually talk to us about them. <laughs> anyway, um, just for Dallas Lace, let me just say this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And well, that's enough of that. The dog butted skins. <laughs> right. 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 Suck on it, Randy Galloway. Oh man. Baghdad Randy. Um see, this, <laughs> what dude is it are they ever gonna stop? Don't they I don't know, maybe maybe people aren't tired of the TO crap. Oh no, they're because now it's gonna happen, Tom. Now all of this stuff that they've been waiting on for three years, they're like, Oh god, look, he said something. Here it comes. And and they're waiting. And nothing's going to happen. <laughs> Unless he doesn't get the ball next week. And he says something like, you know, my toe was kind of bothering me out there. And I thought, man, if I had the ball, I'd feel a little better. And they're all going to go, <gasps> he's throwing Tony Romo under the bus. He said Tony Romo stepped on his foot in the huddle. <laughs> Team Obliterator. Right. Right. Team Obliterator. Here he comes. Here he comes. What a crock. <laughs> it's a huge crock, Tom, and it's filled with Team Obliterator cheese. Team Obliterator is uncoachable. Oh. Oh, he's uncoachable. He killed Jeff Garcia. He killed Donovan McNabb. He even killed Drew Bledsoe. <laughs> <laughs> he's a murderer, Tom. Yes. He's a serial killer. Very interesting today on First Take on ESPN. You know, they always have different counterparts. Right. Um, and uh, Stephen A. was on yesterday, and we've got some of that audio coming up. You're going to love that. But today was actually Dallas linebacker Bobby Carpenter. Oh, yeah? That was bizarre to actually see a Cowboy player in there. And and Skip started his crap going off about T.O. and how he he's sitting there telling Bobby, you're never going to win a Super Bowl with this guy. You should kick his ass. He kept calling him Team Obliterator. And, yeah, he did say that, by the way. <laughs> you should go in the locker room, kick his ass, and he, give him one for me. He, Smack him in the mouth. Say, he, this is from Skip. Yeah. He basically said that, but then uh, Bobby goes, Bobby goes, you know, Skip, the only thing T.O. stands for here is totally oblivious, and I'm talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, but, 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 but I'm famous. I know the National Football League. That's right. I know the National Football League. What? 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 I, oh, I got, uh, what I, I got, uh. I got a new what? Where'd it go? Where He's got I, a oh, new what? Oh, here it what? is. Yeah, it was, uh, it, was uh, it was Stephen A. Here it is. What? <laughs> what? 
What? What? What? What? What? What? <laughs> that's a good one, man. That's a that's almost like an F flat there. What? <laughs> That's pretty good. Ah, uh, see, now we can take it and we can cut it up when we find more audio and make it do that "What What in the Butt" song that they did on South Park. <laughs> what, what, we can have in like the butt. all what, these what, guys singing in it. My butt. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Um. All right. So anyway, so Tio's Tio's horrible, and everybody's telling me that Tio has ruined the team, and this is the beginning of the end. And I probably shouldn't even watch any more Dallas games. They oh. may not win another game, and all. Oh my God, it's over, John. Season's over, dude. You've got the Bengals this week. Believe me, Tio's gonna he's gonna he's gonna blow the whole team up. He's gonna get pissed off. He's gonna do something stupid. Tony Romo's girlfriend's gonna ruin the whole thing. I wish Marion Barber would have come out and said I didn't get the ball enough. He had a right to say he didn't get the ball enough. <laughs> What's with his hair, man? It sticks I, off the I, back of his head like the Wicked Witch's broom. You well, he's know? got it wrapped up back there. I know, but could, you know, Jesus Christ, can you get him some relaxer in there or something? I mean, look at it. It's like a. <laughs> it, it looks like the torch from the Statue of Liberty sticking out of the back of his hat. Hey, listen to this. Uh, I was reading this about Plaxico Burris. Okay. Uh, oh know, yeah, he's all in trouble. Oh my God, this like, guy. He has been fined since his, during his tenure with the Giants. He's been fined between forty and fifty times. <laughs> Now, he's only played 50 games right. with him, so he's been fined an average once per game. He's been fined for missing treatment, missing meetings, showing up late 10 times this year alone, one source said. Uh, he has not seemed overly affected by being hit in the wallet this often. What did affect him, however, was the Giants preventing him from playing in the next game. That really bothered him, said another source. He doesn't care about the fines, but if you don't let him play, well, that's all he cares about. He just wants to play football. Yo, fuck your rules, man. What the hell you mean I can't play no football? <laughs> <laughs> he says he pretty much put Jerry Reese and Coach in a bad spot on this one. It had to stop, and just finding him again wasn't going to work. You know, the old Tom Coughlin would have taken him out to a wall and had him shot. Yeah. He would have. You don't want to play by the rules? You want to miss team meetings, do you? <laughs> would you like to say anything to your loved ones? <laughs> <laughs> well, Burris contends that he missed Monday, but Tuesday was an off day, and he wants to know how the hell can he be fined for missing two days of work when one was an off day. However, he did not contest the unexcused Monday. Burris missed Monday's meeting, and he failed to return several phone calls to the Giants, although he did talk, listen to this, he talked with Charles Way, the Giants' director of player development, that same day, but the Giants claimed there were several other calls that went unanswered. Well, that's <laughs> weird, but he did talk to the guy that day. Well, you know what? I have a, I have a little bit of a, some insight. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. Okay. Hello, this is Plaxico. If you got titties, I'll answer the phone. If this is Coach Coughlin, you can suck on my bone. Oh, that, yeah, okay. All that, right, see, he checked do in. It, Tom. He checked in, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, when Co listen to this. When Coughlin, uh, when Coughlin told Burris about missing the game, other Giants players said that Burris argued his point, and when he realized he couldn't get out of missing the game, he pretty much turned and walked out on the meeting, clearly angered with the decision. What's his point? I'm Plaxico Burris, man. You see them throw the ball at me? You want some <laughs> touchdowns or what? You want a Monty Tuma hobbling his old ass around the field? Is that what you want? <laughs> <laughs> Burris and Coughlin have long had a relationship that could best be described as somewhat contentious. Burris is the one player within the locker room who never seemed to fear his head coach and has gone as far as tuning him out on some occasions. After one season-ending game, Coughlin asked Burris to join his teammates in the center of the locker room. Burris ignored the coach's request and stayed at his locker. Players say there have been other times when Burris has at times turned and walked away from Coughlin when Coughlin was getting on to him about something. <laughs> there is some trepidation about what will happen the next time Burris again commits a rule violation and the team needs Jesus. him, Eli Manning needs him, the offense needs him, but obviously they are trying to lay down the law more strictly. Now, John. Just imagine for a moment, mm -hmm. if Monday you found out all of this stuff right. about T.O. Oh, God, the world would explode, Tom. Nobody would even care that the banks are all failing. No. Nobody no, would give a wouldn't. damn. They wouldn't. If that if it happened on November 4th, nobody would vote. <laughs> You're right. They'd all stay in front. Of, we'd have crawls on the bottom of ESPN. It's just coming in. Terrell Owens has... Terrell Owens has ignored his coach. Uh, it appears that he will not join the team prayer in the middle of the locker room. Wade Phillips is uh, considering a possible suspension. We've got more on this. Dion, Dion, 
Yo, you know, like, I've been texting back and forth with T.O., you know. He ain't trying to miss no team meetings. He just busy texting with me. <laughs> Is that right? You know, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh, my God.